Hello, John Serrato here, coming to you from the First Baptist Church of Manchester, from the Parsonage, uh, during this very strange time, and so happy to be able to reach out to you through this medium. And uh, we're in the Book of Romans, and yesterday we began by talking about hope. Uh, hope, not just the hope of heaven, we have that, that's fixed and sure, God has given us that, but the hope that we need for an attitude of life in the face of negative things every day. We, we want to be a hopeful people. We want to look at the positive. We, we don't want to be looking at the negative and drawn to the negative. The negative draws us because it's troublesome and we feel like we want to fix it. We want to get some help for it. Or, but, you know, so the negative is strong. Uh, it's, it's difficult to maintain a, a, a positive spirit and a positive attitude in the face of difficulties that are real, very real. So uh, the scripture we started with was Romans chapter 15, where it said, Now the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing in believing. So then we looked at uh, chapter 15, verse 4, where it says the things that were written in the Old Testament were there to help us have hope. Well, how does that work? Well, the Old Testament record shows us the power and the faithfulness of God, the, the faithfulness of God, the fact that, that he, he, he never, never could lie. And uh, I want you to look at this. Uh, uh, you don't have to turn to it, but there's a scripture in Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, and it says this, God is not a God, I mean, I'm sorry, God is not a man that he should lie. God is not a man that he should lie. Now, this is a principle that's fixed all through the Old Testament, not always spelled out exactly like this, but this truth. This truth is perennial in, through the time of, in the Old Testament. God is not a, a man that he should lie. And, and literally in the Hebrew it means not only say lies, but do things that are deceitful uh, or, or, or anything that act deceitfully. God, God can't do that. It's impossible because he is pure truth. He is the pure truth. He's the source of absolute truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then going on in, in Numbers, he says, Hath he said, and shall he not do it? That's a rhetorical question, which means the answer is obvious. And the answer is obviously no. No, he, he never said anything that he wouldn't do. He didn't say, I'm going to do this and then not do it. So he hath, hath he said, and shall he not do it? And it's a Hebrew parallelism. Then he says it again in a different way. Hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Mm, what a question. So what is the answer to that question? Well, the answer is God is not a man, that he cannot lie. He will not lie. It's impossible for him to lie. So you can read his word and know that, he's, that it's true. Because the Word of God is the Word of God. Men wrote it. They wrote in their own styles, their own time, with sometimes with limited information and uh, so forth. But, but God gave us this book. And overall, it is perfect for what he designed it to do. And that is to show us, number one, that he is pure love, he is good, and he is utterly and totally faithful. The Old Testament word for God is chesed, steadfast, unchanging, fixed, eternal love. In the New Testament, it's agape, self-giving love, totally above and beyond just normal human affection, human love, brotherly love, family love. This is God's kind of love that so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So, trusting and believing, that's how we have hope. That's where our spirit of hopefulness and our attitude, a positive attitude comes in. Believing God's word. Whenever we start feeling afraid 
or anxious or negative or maybe angry or envious or whatever, any of these negative emotions, negative feelings, we've lost sight, at least temporarily, of the faithfulness and the goodness and the love and the infinite power of God. We, we've kind of put that aside. We're, we're not focusing on that. We're letting these other things eclipse it. So they're like, a, like some big dark thing comes in and blots out the light, uh, the light of his love and goodness. So we need that kind of, that kind of hope. Romans 12.12, 12, Paul says, rejoicing in hope, rejoicing in hope. Let's just look at that verse for a minute. Romans 12.12, 12, it's in my other Bible here. Um, when, um, the, the, the apostle says uh, in, in this passage of Scripture, uh, he, he says, all right, let me see, where am I? Hold on. Romans 12.12, 12, rejoicing in hope. Um, okay, let me find it. Okay, here it is. Romans 12, 12, rejoicing in hope, and this is worth waiting for, <laughs> rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation. The two go together. Rejoicing in hope gives you patience in tribulation. And then it says, an instant in prayer. Boy, what a formula. What a beautiful formula. Paul says, uh, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing faithfully in prayer, always with prayer. We live in a spirit of prayer, talking to the Lord. I just talk to the Lord all the time, and by faith I know He's there, right there. He says, I am holding your right hand. I am with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. I am with you to the end of the age. Promise after promise after promise of His presence if you'll just believe it, if you'll just believe it, accept it. See, we, we get upset. We want to see results. We want to see things happen when we want them to happen. But God has a perfect plan, a perfect timing, and, and, and things don't always happen at the moment you want them to happen. Uh, you know, when you look at Jesus, he's so perfect, such a model human person. I mean, he's the, he's the, he's the perfect humanity. He's God, and he became 100% human to show us what a perfect human is. And, and he never was in a hurry. No, you'll never see where Jesus said, oh, come on, we've got to get going. No, he said, let's go over to the other side. Or wait a minute, let's not do this. Just cool and calm. And the disciples were all frazzled, and, and, and he just calmed them down. And he, So he, he, was, he was controlled absolutely by a total, absolute trust that his Father in heaven had total control of every detail. You never, the things came to him that he, he had limited himself to be human, so sometimes he got some surprises. I believe that's true. I think sometimes people came, told him something he didn't know. He said, oh, that's, oh, that's impossible. No, it's very possible. Because Jesus, at times, he could do mental miracles and knew things that nobody knew or knew the future or knew somebody's heart. But most of the time, he lived just like us. He didn't go around living in omnipresence, omniscience, and omnipotence. He set those things aside so he could be, like the Bible says, in every way made like us, his brethren. And I, 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 I can't read minds. Once in a while I get a break, but <laughs> not too often. But I can't read my own mind. But the point is, Jesus didn't always live in the supernatural by way of knowledge. He just lived and so he could react like any human being would react. Only he did it perfectly every time. So he had perfect peace. See, it's so easy for us in our minds to run ahead of the Lord. We can't run ahead of him physically, but we can mentally. We're in a hurry. We want him to fix it. We want him to change it. We want him to uh, uh, supply some need now. You know, I mean, that's the way we are. And, and the Bible says, be still. 
and know that I am God, not you. I am God. Be still and know that I am God. And, so, and literally that means be silent. That means stop talking. And sometimes we don't talk out loud, but we talk in our own heads and go round and round. And, 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 there's, and, and, we, and that's when we lose hope and we get negative. We, we lose a positive feeling about things. We start worrying and anxious. In nothing be anxious, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall mount guard over your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Incredible promise and uh, incredible advice. So, uh, we're, we get afraid uh, it's not going to happen. We get afraid that it's not going to happen when we want it to happen. We've got to back off. When the Hebrew children were released from Egypt and they were trapped at the Dead Sea and then the Egyptian army was chasing them, God said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Sometimes we got to stand still. We want to run uh, ahead of him. Okay, so uh, the point here is that the Lord Jesus said that we can be like him. He said, the servant is not above his master, but the servant should be like his master. And Paul says, all things work together for good in order that we might be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus. So he's the firstborn among many. God wants us to be like Jesus. Perfect peace, content, cool and calm, never in a hurry, always under control. Why? totally yielded to the good and acceptable and perfect will of God on earth as it is in heaven. And that's what we want. That's the way we want to live. God bless this word to every heart, I pray. Please, in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>